Last night's public consultation on the proposed Port of Belize slash Waterloo investment drew a diverse crowd of participants and attendees at the Biltmore. There were those who came to listen attentively with an open mind and those who had already decided that the project should succeed or fail. Some of the port's own employees, the stevedores, came specifically to offer objections. But there also appeared to be a few pockets of supporters who spent the night in verbal scuffles with representatives of the referendum petitioners who want to block the proposed development using a national referendum. Those petitioners wore this Ashcraft the White Devil t-shirt, and during the back and forth between these two groups, insults were hurled left and right that the other side's support for, or opposition to, the project was bought and paid for. And caught in the middle of all this were the members of the head table, the experts representing Waterloo slash Port of Belize. They had the very tough task of explaining the features of the proposed development. Those experts had to proceed at times through loud jeers and impolite retorts from the audience. As we stand right here, we do not necessarily see a logical or a rational alternative, alternative to, ex, uh, to expanding the port of Belize. Belize, as a country, is going to need to continue to trade. We must uh, preserve our commercial activity, primarily in the Port Loyola Belize city districts. Uh, the expansion produces uh, the, the, the expansion that we're proposing here potentially produces the least environmentally damaging um, outcome of any of the alternatives. And the people who are working there, the people from the government, when they get there, they feel comfortable, they are productive, and the, the Belizean people who go in there, they are comfortable as well. So these investments, they make the, they make the, they make the port facility a nicer place will make the port facility a nicer place for everybody. It provides much needed economic boost through direct and indirect employment and demand for goods and services. An improved port will promote growth in key sectors such as agriculture and mining above other, among others. Better access to foreign markets for dom domestic farms and less transport costs and goods for Belizean consumers. The topic which seemed to generate the most interest from the audience was the acknowledgement from the experts that, without proper mitigation measures, this project could harm the environment. On the terrestrial side, as I mentioned, the area is already heavily disturbed, so there are no habitats of any significant value that we encountered during the surveys. On the marine side, um, potential impacts would uh, be increased turbidity in the water column, which may affect marine life. Potential of damage to habitats during dredging, that's a potential impact. And um, uh, you would also, um, in terms of waste generation, potential for contamination of land and the marine environment from waste generation, threat to marine animals due to ingestion, potential for attraction of feral animals and disease due to improperly managed waste. On the liquid waste generation side, potential to contaminate soils and water with nutrient-enriched pollutants, potential to produce disease-causing vectors due to poorly treated discharge water, noise, Ms. Dion just mentioned, the people in the area are, are, um, they are concerned about noise, um, so that's, one, that's another issue, and also from dust, because they'll be handling a lot of material, both native material from the site and material that is brought in from outside. Uh, and then, of course, you will have some fuel storage because it's a big development project. Those potential environmental impacts also featured prominently in the questions that the head table had to answer from the attendees. Your present proven and your future proven your development. We, the Belizeans, need to answer to every one of our children how we will present proof and future-proof our reef as our heritage. We agree with an enormous amount of what you said, and we absolutely stand by the fact that the Belize Barrier Reef needs to be absolutely protected, and every step that we've taken in this project planning is toward that end. But we also believe that taking steps toward this project are going to safeguard Belize's greener future and create infrastructure and create jobs that otherwise will not exist in that area. So uh, we, it's, I completely appreciate the passion and... Um, I, I completely understand why you feel as, as impassioned as you do. It's an incredible asset. And we, without question, have put in every resource we can to make sure that 
unequivocally nothing will happen to the Belize Barrier Reef. The near shore disposal of some of the dredged materials, can you 100% guarantee that there will be no contamination of the water column? The first I will point out, the material that we're putting there is um, a lot has been made of it being toxic. It is not toxic. This material has been widely studied. All of those studies are included in depth in the EIA, in the annexes of it, and you can look at the composition of that material and see that all of these material samples that we have qualify for offshore placement in some of the most, in some of the most stringent jurisdictions in the world, Canada, the UK, the US. So all of the chemical concentrations, which exist, of course, in every subsoil, um, are way below the thresholds for offshore placement. So this material has never been touched that we're moving. This is not some sludge, as it's been called. This is coming from the first and second layer of material that's in the port now, which has never been dredged. What makes you any different? How can you guarantee for these young people not just jobs while your project is ongoing, how can you guarantee for our Belizeans long-term sustainability? The Port Loyola area rep, Gilroy Usher Sr., also chimed into the discussion with an endorsement for the project. And I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the government. I'm speaking as the air representative for Port Loyola. And while Gilroy Usher Sr. supports it, Gary Simonian, the son-in-law of Mike Feinstein, the rival developer behind Port Coral, went to the public consultation to tell PBL slash Waterloo that Belize City doesn't need their development because Port Coral exists. How long will it take for you to build this port? In, in, depending on when the approval is, we expect about 18 to 24 months of construction. I think that will probably be never, sir. However, I'd like to make it crystal clear, there already is a project being completed, Port Coral, in the next few months. It 100% has a causeway approved and permitted to be built from Port Coral to the Drown Key development and from Drown Key to the city. The entire purpose and basis of your project with needing a land-based approach for guests to disembark Oasis class ships, and I do agree, it is safer, and come to Belize and enjoy all the tourism here, already exists, sir. The purpose of your cruise port project has nothing to do with cruise tourism. It has to do with something else. The cargo port has had 15 years in receivership to get upgraded. It's interesting how today is when they choose to do this. So I, I want to make it crystal clear, that causeway already exists and is on the construction calendar, sir, and is going to be built. So the tourists, all of the cruise tourists, will be able to disembark safely. When I look around here, I see a room for the Belizeans, right? I am Belizean myself. Don't let the accent fool you. Um, you know who I don't see? Mr. Munoz, could you point out Mr. Ashcroft for me or his son? He has never been to a consultation. Not one. I see competitors here. I don't see Mr. Ashcroft at any of these things. He doesn't care enough for Belize to be present or this project to be here personally. But one of the most significant exchanges of the night was the back and forth between the port's CEO, Andrew Lane, and the president of the Christian Workers' Union. One of the talking points of the sales pitch for this project is that it will supposedly generate 2,500 jobs. In Belize, we have a saying, see me and live with me, are two different things. I am president of the Christian Workers' Union, and I believe that tonight has been more about jobs than about the reef. So my question is about the relationship with the people who will do the jobs. Now, in the case of Waterloo slash PBL, you guys are not a newcomer. You have workers. You have employees. And I have had the honor of representing those employees. Since then, we have had three major confrontations down at the waterfront. We are presently, in fact, in a couple of days, you and I will be in court. We'll be in court, Mr. Lane, because you are and the organization, not you personally, but Waterloo slash PBL, yes. took it upon themselves 
to take up a side legally with resources to prevent one and a half million dollars from reaching your own employees. I want to hear how it is that we are going to trans just completely transform that energy. Because I think you would concede it is a very toxic relationship we've had. How are we going to transform that now then miraculously? Because I cannot understand how a minister of government can get up on this microphone and say they are going to support a project 500%. I can't understand. Because, 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 because it is, because it is one thing, it is, it is one thing to say that you support this project in principle. But you would have to at least add, I support the project in principle, but you guys will have to do better with your workers. You will have to do better by the union. You would have to do that. A lot of, a lot of what you say is, um, is, is of course, these are, these are correct things that have happened in the past. They probably shouldn't have happened. I do acknowledge um, that the relationship of the past, essentially going all the way back to 2004, I believe it was, um, it, it could have been a lot better. And uh, it's very regrettable of the various different things that have happened along the way. I thank you very much for recognizing that you at least see some positive change um, since I've been here. My strong belief, and I think we have shared opinions here, is that we want to have happy employees. And my personal belief, Mr. Hyde, in working with you as I have done for the last 18 months, I think you and I, we can achieve this. And I, th I think we've already had some achievements in that time. I would very much believe that the experience of our existing staff and our future staff in the future is going to be significantly better than it ever has been in the past. Reporting for 7 News, Daniel Ortiz.